That's right, Aaron. We are talking specifically about Microsoft Teams as a development platform. And I say we because I'm joined by my guests, Brennan Kwok and Paul Solomon. Welcome. Hi. Hi. Thanks for having us Hi on there. the show. Hi, Son. Hey, so please introduce yourselves. Let's start with you, Brennan. Um, what kind of work do you do? Hi, yes. Uh, yes, I'm, uh, my name is Brennan. I'm based in Singapore. Uh, primarily, I'm a solution architect for my company where I design solutions uh, in pr primarily around collaboration and communications. So I'm very much into teams. Uh, and also, uh, you know, we are also looking at, in my personal expertise-wise, I also uh, like to play around with Power Apps and the Power Platform. So uh, I'm here to talk a bit about that today. So glad to be on the show. Thanks. And Paul, tell the world a bit about you. Hi, I'm Paul from the Philippines, MVP for, for Business Ops. Um, I'm running two companies here, startup companies, startup tech companies. Um, I'm leading the um, um, Biz Up group here in the Philippines or the community for citizen developers and pro developers also focus on um, our platform and Dynamics 365. Right. And we're going to talk a little bit about that in this session. One of the things that's really impressed me about Build is just all of the different topics and how they're applicable to different people in the roles that we do in tech. So I'm an IT pro. Coding is not really my thing, but I keep on hearing about these citizen developers and the Power Platform is just growing in terms of its usage and what people are doing with it. Brennan, can you educate me? What is this term citizen developer and what makes you different from what I would traditionally think of as a coding type developer? Yeah, sure, Sonia. And I think uh, the title says it all, right? Uh, what Paul mentioned, citizen developers versus pro developers. So I'm not a, a pro developer. That's not my my role in, in my job, but I can definitely connect with being a citizen developer. And basically that means that with the platform, with the Power Platform that includes Power Apps, Power BI, uh, Power Automate, and together and recently introduced Power Virtual Agents. Now, you don't have to be a, develop, a pro developer to be able to build powerful and, and effective applications for your organization, right, and be able to deploy that across different uh, devices and also within teams itself. So it makes it so easy because it does all of the necessary plumbing and, and creating of the, of the UI elements for you. So you don't really have to write any code. Right, uh, to build those applications, you just leverage the platform. You can build those uh, fun leverage those functions that's in there, and just build it build it out like you would do a PowerPoint slide. Right, add your controls in, add your data source in, and then you you have your app ready to go. Right, so it's so easy, and so that's why we say citizen developers. Right, uh, anyone with a little bit of background in IT can start to build apps that are powerful and yet you know flexible for the organization. That's great. So. Just because it's easy doesn't mean that it's less important, does it? Because I know that you can have some huge amount of impact using these tools to create applications. Can you share us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if you read some of the uh, case studies going out, we have school principals that are actually developing apps for their teachers and students, right? So definitely being easy doesn't mean at all uh, being, you know, uh, simple, right? It's actually, can, you can build very, very large uh, and, and effective uh, applications that incorporate business flows. You can integrate it with Power, power Automate, integrate it with your workflows, and then be able to build, you know, an application that involves multiple people, for example, approving. So for those things that need to automate, for example, you may be, companies may be using paperwork, uh, they can actually, you know, do away with that and move to the digital digital transformation, right? Embark on a digital transformation and uh, start to leverage the power platform. And uh, and the best part about this, like I said, you don't need to be a pro developer to do that. And Paul is a, is a pro developer and he's going to talk more about how these pro developers can even complement together with the uh, citizen developers like uh, myself. Yeah. Look, I, I love the fact that you mentioned digital transformation because we hear that word and we tend to think that it's either going to require an, an army of coders or if we don't right. have an in-house development capability, then we're either going to have to um, hire somebody, outsource, out, outsource some projects or go and buy off-the-shelf 
applications. And it's great to know that there is an opportunity there, especially for people who know the business and know how their business operates, because that to me is one of the key things when you're putting these applications together, right? It's the platform itself can do a, an incredible number of things. But when you kind of augment that with the knowledge of, of how a business runs and what those processes are, then you can uh, really see some great impact happening. Have you got anything that you want to screen share with us, Brennan? Yeah, sure. So I prepared a, a very simple demo. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, right? And hopefully it'll show up in a minute or well, a couple of seconds. Can everyone see my screen? There we can go. you guys see my screen? Yeah. Okay, yep. great. So I'm just going to walk through a very simple demonstration on how easy it is to build an application using the Power Platform, using Power Apps, and then deploy it into Microsoft Teams so that everyone in my team or even in the organization can actually leverage it. Right. And so here I've got my Power Apps uh, Maker portal where you can, this is a starting point where you can build all of your applications uh, in the power, using Power in the Power Platform. So one of the best ways to start off building an app is to uh, so start from data, right? So all of us may have spreadsheets or SharePoint documents or lists that you want to start, you know, working on to automate certain workflows. And this is where you can start. But that's not the only way, right? So you can also build a, a blank application using a Canvas uh, Canvas application, or you can use um, uh, model-driven applications, right? But I'm just going to keep this simple. I'm just going to show you how you can build an application uh, starting from data. And there are so before I begin, there are also many depth of data sources, right, that you can connect to, uh, hundreds of them that you can connect to, such as Salesforce.com or even Google Drive, and you can use all those data sources to be the starting point for building your application. So my demo is actually very simple, but it's also very relevant. So as you know, all of us are working you know, at home today because of this pandemic. And so one of the things that uh, has been in demand for those knowledge workers that are at home is uh, headsets, right? So as, as what I'm using right now, a headset, and we've seen huge demand for these headsets as, uh, in the past couple of months. So I'm logged in here as a user, Megan, right? Megan, like me, is not a uh, pro developer, right? But Megan keeps a, a list in SharePoint, right? Which contains a number of uh, headsets that the company uh, makes available, right, for employees to use. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you the, the SharePoint list very quickly. So here I've got, I'm bringing up the SharePoint uh, portal, right? And, and you can see that once it comes up, I'm going to be able to uh, bring up that list uh, very, uh, very sh and show you that. So it's kicking, taking a bit of time. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I've got a number of sites here. And so the site that I want to go into is the team site with some data on it. So if I were to uh, go to that site, all right, I'll be able to uh, go to that list, which, which is contains some of the data. So here in, th in this example, uh, Megan has been working with suppliers, right, to provide uh, a list of headsets that has been approved by the company to, to that they can issue to the employees, right. So I've kept that list uh, in the teams in the team site, right, which uh, sorry in a SharePoint site uh, that uh, contains the details on one of the headsets that are available. So if I go ahead and click on uh, that uh, team site right now. So if I click on the headset list, it should uh, bring it bring to me the uh, SharePoint list that shows you the headset, the name of the type of headset that we have, and also the price of it, and also the description, and also a picture, right? So this this list could be maintained by the reseller, for example, you know, uh, through and uh, imported in using uh, either Excel file, right? But essentially, I want to build an application based on this list that will allow users to request. Right for those headsets. So I'm going to go ahead, go to back to Power Apps, and click on the Start from Data, and click on SharePoint, and this will then actually bring me to uh, the next step, which allows me to then choose right which particular SharePoint site right I want to be uh, connected to. So uh, let me just go ahead and just give it a couple of seconds. Your internet connection is working really hard there and taking our Teams call as well as bringing yeah. up this website. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Because I, when I was doing this, uh, you know, I didn't have this call on, so definitely the bandwidth is uh, lesser. But with this bandwidth right now, so 
Right now, I've got the connections, right? So again, I mentioned you can create different types of connections here. I'm just going to go ahead and choose my SharePoint connection and choose the team site that I want to go into, which contains the list. And immediately, it brings me a list of items, right? So here is the list that I want to connect to. And the moment I click Connect, watch what happens, right? It's actually going to start to build the application for me, right? Without me to having to write a single line of code, right? So it's going to give me a simple application that contains uh, three screens. It will have um, a browse screen and a detail screen and then an edit screen, right? So things, it's already, already a functional application that I can use right off the bat, right? So let's let it do its work, right? It's, it's working in the background and it's actually going to very quickly allow me to then uh, view the application that's being built, right? And allow me to actually preview it and also test around and modify the functions as well. So yeah, it's coming up. So here we go. Here I've got a, a, a application that's really built for me and I didn't even write a single line of code, right? So I've got uh, the title, I've got the search bar here. I've got the gallery that shows me all the different items within the, uh, the list. Um, I have the ability to sort and also to add new uh, 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 items, right? So I can do a quick preview, right, of this uh, application that's just been built for me and it's fully functional. As you can see, I can just click on some of these items and it will show me, you know, that, uh, that detail screen as well. Right, so I can really use it off the bat if I wanted to, or I can of course customize it to be more uh, to meet my requirements. Right, so for example, I may not want to show you know, this is the price, for example. Right, I may not just want to show a number. I may want to just quickly format it to show up a, a, a currency. So for me to do that, I just need to uh, pick up some uh, functions, which some of the built-in functions, which is the text function. Right, and I'm just going to uh, do some formatting there. Right, and just going to add that in. And you can see, you know, that will actually straight away modify into a currency. So instead of having a, just a number now, I can see a currency as well, okay? And so in addition to that, right, if I were to go into details, I can also add, for example, uh, a button, right, for users to do a request. So if I just click on a button, I can just add that button in. And then now I can then connect that button with uh, workflows, right? So if I go to actions and I can click on Power Automate, it will actually link me to a workflow that I've created or allow me to create a new workflow. For example, send an email to the my manager, to the manager for, for uh, to use, right? So I'm just gonna, in the interest of time, I'm just gonna keep it simple. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this, uh, this, um, this uh, application, right? I'm just gonna call it, you know, uh, request uh, headsets. And it's going to be saving into Power Apps. And then now I can start to share this application uh, with anyone that wants to uh, use it, right? So I can click on the share button and then I can then just choose, you know, different users or share it to the entire organization if I wanted to. And so, so you've just gone and uh, taken, taken some data in a list and basically fulfilled right. a business need. You understood the process from a human perspective and you've literally just written an app that helps manage that right. process. That's incredible. So I know I'm, I'm really short of time, so we may overrun a bit, but I'm just going to quickly show you how you can actually also add this app into Teams, right? So if I go back to my application, right, um, I can actually uh, go back into the apps, okay? And it will actually allow me to then uh, select the app that I just created, okay? Um, request headsets. And now let's notice that there is a Add to Teams button, right? If I click on that, it actually allows me to download the application as a zip file, Right, and uh, just save it into my, uh, in my in my file, and now I can go back into my team site, or whatever team site that I'm in, I'm in, and able to add this application into my team site as well. So all I need to do, go into applications, right, and then click on um, upload a custom application. Over right at the bottom here, okay, and then just choose the file that uh, I just created, right, uh, that I just downloaded, right. I go into downloads. Right, I can see the uh, applications that I just um, created, this uh, request headsets, and then it will automatically put it into a channel that I desire. So I can just click on to add to a team, and then it straight away goes into the team that I'm a member of, right? Yeah, or I can pick a, a team that I'm a member of, right? So I just click on what, this particular one, set up a tab, and that's how easy it is to incorporate and embed an application that I've just built on Power, Power Platform into uh, Microsoft Teams, right? And so I go back into the uh, Teams that I have in there, right? Right now I can see the uh, tab that the 
Uh, so just uh, click on save. And I'm just going to hand this over to Paul right after this. Okay. So what I'm just showing you is how a user can add it into a particular team that the user is a mem member of. But if I wanted to deploy it to the whole environment, to the whole organization, I can also ask my team's administrator to upload it as an organizational application where anyone can actually add it into their teams. Right. So that's all I have. Right. So uh, I know I've taken quite a lot of time, so I'm going to hand this time over to Paul to uh, to talk about his uh, uh, his portion. So, it was so great to see how simple that was, though. And Paul, I want to know, does this mean that our professional developers are out of a job? Like, what's in it for the Power Platform for someone who is used to coding? Yeah, um, actually, Sonia, there's a lot of um, tools that the pro developers can really, like, um, use for, for us to be able to co-create and co-build with citizen developers using Power Platform. And... Um, one good example of a stack that can be used is a combination of Power Automate, which is like uh, we do the RPAs and something like that inside the Power Platform. Um, of course, using Microsoft Teams as our front end to, to be able to capture user, user input. And the great one is the Adaptive Guard, which is for pro developers. These three together can really create a synergy between pro and citizen developers. So I recorded like a video so you can see how it works. You can literally do this for about five minutes. Can we play the video? So as you can see, I'm in the adaptive card site. So there's a link there. Then you will see there are templates there. Then what I'm just going to do is to like edit on the, the adaptive card forms. You can see elements there and something like that. You can add URL and image. And uh, what I'm going to do is to create my um, flow or a power automate um, flow for me to be able to like project this in Microsoft Teams. So I'll connect my flow to a Microsoft Teams um, action. Then I will pick uh, the, the team name, of course. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to announce that there is going to be a build conference. So after that, I'm going to um, run it. So it's it's now working on, on, on the Microsoft uh, Teams. All right, then you, you can see that I've created like a bot that can allow my users to really go to the build side um, uh, by, by just copying the JSON code to my Power Automate. And you can do that for literally five minutes. So as a pro developers, you can like um, template the JSON or whatever the citizen developer can consume using Adaptive Card. Thanks, Paul. Look, it was interesting to hear from Aaron after he watched the Power Platform keynote that he was really surprised about what he would normally have to, to code for and that is what he would naturally use actually is already a lot out of the box for him to use already. Now, you've inspired me both. If I wanted to go and get started, what do you recommend that I go and have a look at to start learning about the Power Platform? All right, so um, like Brennan uh, mentioned, so in Power Platform, we, we have uh, different variant of tools that you can use. So right now, the newest is the Power Virtual Agent, which is you can create um, a, a chat bot and later on connect that to a more sophisticated bot in Azure or a Q&A maker one. You can, and then if you're a data scientist, we have this uh, Power BI that you can use already, of course, to visualize data. And as I've uh, shown in the video, we have this Power Automate that if you're a pro developer, you can extend that to really automate the desktop, all right, that we call the right um, as of today RPAs. And if you want to really extend your app in a way that um, it can it can really be like a consumer app, um, you can like connect the CDS or common data service to your open source application uh, created on React Native and then just use an Azure function, use Power Automate to like call the APIs or the HTTP triggers. Then later on, you can um, connect that application to your common data services and that common data services can um, connect to other um, business application inside the Microsoft stack. So just, just nice. and we, we, we have some training like um, Power Apps in a Day, something like that, that, that the citizen and pro developers can really um, um, learn about Power Platform. Yeah, so and many a opportunities. Thank you both. 
Thank you both right, for your time okay. and coming and sharing with us. Sure. Sure. <laughs> Look, it's time for 